In 1867, as Canada became a nation under the British North America Act, the CPR, or Canada's National Railway, played a paramount role in the settlement and economic success of the towns and cities that make up the Prairie Provinces. And here in the city of Swift Current, it was no less important. When the expected route of the railway shifted course dramatically in the spring of 1881, to counter the economic threat of Northern American railroads, the course of growth in Swift Current shifted right alongside it. Swift Current became one of 800 communities that grew up along the main line, its location chosen thanks in part to what the soon-to-be town was named for, the Swift Current that flowed here. Well, the railway was here. This is where the, uh, in the Real Rebellion, this is where the troops took off to go north. So this was sort of the, the, uh, the rush was to get that to here. And there was water here. It was a good place for um, put up a station. And... In 1883, the CPR main line reached Swift Current, and construction of the Swift Current station soon followed. It would include a ticket office, dining hall with hotel rooms above, and a small roundhouse needed for locomotive maintenance, as well as a dam constructed in 1888, located about a kilometer southeast of the station, constructed to provide a steady supply of water for its steam locomotives. Soon after, the company sold its first town lot. Growth in the city continued to be driven by the railway, with the opening of ranching leaseholds along the railway for settlement, attracting a large immigrant population. The local population soon had grown to 500 by 1905, the same year the first car of locally grown wheat was shipped from Swift Current, boosting its agricultural prospects and making the CPR one of the community's largest employers. The CPR station also acted as a service center for the region, where crews were employed round the clock and dispatched down the line in the event of train derailments or other disasters that would require the use of the service center's specialized steam crane. The first of the three historic CP rail buildings in Swift Current's downtown core was opened in 1907, with the other two buildings constructed and opened in 1908 and 1912. The building right on the end of Central Avenue was known as the Telegraph Building, and the building to the east of that was the Passenger Building. That was the, the depot where there were, used to be a lunch counter in there, and uh, the waiting room and the, the ticket office and the baggage room was in that building. And the building off of the end of First Avenue West was the CP Express Building. That's where all the parcels and stuff. The freight sheds, of course, are gone. They're not around now, but they were down just by the overpass, just on the other side of the overpass. And that's where all the carload stuff was unloaded. The separation of passenger and freight facilities was frequently recommended by railway architects, particularly in busy terminals, where there was a need to accommodate a large number of newly admitted immigrants waiting with their belongings before they continued into surrounding settlements. Well, the, the telegraph department or communications department w was still part of the corporate body of the CPR. We weren't directly affected by running the trains as such, but we provided the uh, more circuits and the uh, telephone circuits that they used. We, we supplied all that to the railway department. We worked hand in hand, but we were separate. Later, as long distance travelers or new immigrants stopped for a rest or disembarked to wait for a connection, the distance between buildings served as the ideal spot for a garden where passengers could take strolls and which provided fresh flowers for the dining cars. It is said that Swift Current's gardens rivaled the gardens of the larger Regina and Moose Jaw stations, the first three company gardens established by the CPR in Western Canada. Well, the CPR one time had a, an agricultural department and, and they used to send trees out to the station agents that they could plant little trees and shrubs around their station buildings and, and this, that type of thing. And the, and the bigger depots um, often had flower gardens around them just for beautification. Swift Current was known for having really beautiful flower gardens. Designated a Heritage Railway Station in 1991 for their historical, 
architectural and environmental significance, of a larger significance for the roles these buildings played in Swift Current's growth from a town to a city, and in its continued growth today. The railway brought all sorts of people to Swift Current, including new immigrants, who would step off the boat at Halifax's Pier 21 and get on a train headed west to seek a new life, prosperity, and some land to go with it. The settlers' effects would come here and they, they'd start out from here to their homesteads and whatever while the other lines were being built. And um, they, they, the local economy, that's how they received all their goods and stuff for sale. Had to come by rail, though the roads were not very good, so it came in by rail. Trains were also in high demand to move products and people eastward, from grain and other agricultural products to market. To those who traveled eastward, such as the Onda Ottawa trekkers in the 1930s, that ultimately ended in the Regina riot. Of course, during the war, there were a lot of troop movements as well. Local regiments of the 209th Battalion left for the front on board CP trains at the outbreak of World War I, as did the 14th Canadian Hussars and newly trained airmen for the RAF during World War II, who had arrived by train just months earlier to earn their wings at the local flight training school as part of the British Commonwealth Air Training Program. By 1940, the Swift Current Station had become a major transportation centre in southern Saskatchewan. Situated on the newly constructed Trans-Canada Highway, the CP Rail continued to aid in connecting the city to surrounding communities well into the 1950s. With six branch lines from Swift Current leading to Empress, Vanguard, Moose Jaw, Coderre, Stewart Valley, Simi, and Verlo. Yeah, they, there was a lot of uh, passenger activity. There used to be two or three trains uh, going each way every day, and uh, there was a lot of passengers. I say the, the passenger service was a, a vital service for, well, throughout the West. If you had a car, you would try and travel, and some of the roads weren't all that great, so you didn't go too far in a car. But uh, it was important because it was a, a good way of moving a family. You had sleeping cars on there where they could ride overnight and have a sleep. There was dining cars on there. They could have something to, to eat in the dining car. And peanut butchers on there where you could get newspaper and a bag of candy and stuff. I think it was a, an important thing over the years that people had an access to some way of getting out of the Swift Current. Uh, I remember when I came here in, in 50s, the, uh, you'd walk down the main street here and pretty near every second or third person you passed was a railroader. Soon the growing pockets of post-war population began to rely more and more on auto transportation. And when a political decision was made to change the mainline route from the southern half of the province up through Saskatoon in the north, ridership decreased dramatically until eventually all passenger service to Swift Current ceased in 1990. Today, only freight cars ride the rails of Swift Current, but their numbers are many with more than 40 trains making their way through the city day and night. The CPR stations in Swift Current are visible landmarks that can be seen from many vantage points around the city and at the heart of Swift Current's downtown core. A rare surviving Canadian example of CPR construction, utilizing three distinct buildings to house three distinct functions. A piece of Swift Current's history that today continues to be a valuable reminder of where we've come from and where we have the potential for new growth and development.